Do you have a cricket ball? Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> well done, Simon. <laughs> We're going to talk basic grips because that's what I was talking with Tim. If, yeah. a, if a youngster is watching now and they're going to bowl seam, boy or girl, what would you advise the first thing to do in terms of holding the cricket ball? Uh, different ways, of course, and everybody has, over, over the years, done it slightly differently. I always preferred to be just... If I'm bowling the... This is the in-swinger to the left-hander, way-swinger to the right-hander. Thumb, basically, on the bottom of the ball, just on the side of your thumb, right on the seam. Fingers just slightly angled for that one that would go away from the right-hander and into the left-hander. I never had my fingertips on the, on the ball. Always tried to roll it off the fingertips. So I can take the mic away a little bit, and that's how it would roll out. Off the fingertips, not in tight there. So I'd let it roll out off those fingertips, and that gave the little bit of, I guess, the backspin sort of slight movement, and it would assist the away swing. Um, guys, you don't, you don't it want slightly. it jam, jammed in your hand, though. If you turn no. your hand sideways, just show... So you, you don't there. want it jammed right back it's in, It's not touching this finger at all, and it's not... Now, some guys will look at a slower ball where they'll hold it deeper in the hands, but it's not touching these fingers at all. It's not... Those two are basically doing nothing at all. They're just underneath the ball. Uh, the away swinger to the left-hander, which I bowled as well, Jimmy Anderson we've seen perfect, I think, of late that way there. Just turn the fingers slightly again. Thumb position doesn't change at all. And, and guys over time, girls over time, have gone straight up and down the seam. More probably seam bowlers than swing bowlers doing that. And then we talk about Tim Southey, Anderson, Broad, maybe the three-quarter ball. Call it, I, I call it the three-quarter. I think Tim Southey, Trent Bolt call it the three-quarter. They just feel like that's around about three-quarters across the seam. Now, Southey's one would generally sort of go like that out of the hands and it will hit the seam and move away from the left-hander back into the right-hander. Nine times out of ten it will go that way. Very rarely does it hit and go like a leg cutter. So that's what he's talking about with his three-quarter ball, that sort of position there. What I don't want to do is put words into Jimmy Anderson or Stuart Broad's mouth, but I'm sure Jimmy has said to me when he's bowling the wobble seam, he holds it, if you hold it up normally, <coughs> excuse me, he just splits the fingers a little bit more, just makes it a little bit wider. Right. And it sort of, instead of Southies going like that, it yes. just sort of, sort of does yeah, and, that. And that, as I say, there's, there's so many different ways. There's no right, no wrong. And over the years, we've seen... I mean, Malcolm Marshall, uh, the late great Malcolm Marshall, try and get that in there, that was his thumb position. He used to turn his thumb that way, and it would sort of just sit quite comfortably in that little groove at the bottom of your thumb. And that was where he, how he found it um, beneficial to, to swing the ball. And he was a beautiful swing bowler at genuine pace as well. Well, that's an interesting point. In terms of young boys or girls, how much is the whole game about finding what works for you? Yeah, absolutely, and not getting too technical. Some people might just... I don't know about Simon. Simon was a wonderful swing bowler. It may just be something that comes very natural. You'll see young boys and girls run up and bowl in the net for the first time, and they will swing it naturally. It just comes out to the way their wrist is. You know, some might swing it in, some might swing it out. And also, I would say, also, don't correct. Some have got unorthodox actions. You know, we, we don't produce the Lassith Malingas of this world because of the pitches they play on and circumstances that you're brought up. In England, generally, you want to produce seam-up bowlers. You want to produce people with high actions because of the conditions, the pitches. Um, also, in county cricket, you want to be hitting that seam. You want to have your wrist behind the ball. So at a young age, you don't want to be over-correcting. Um, just try and be as natural as possible. The one thing I get asked the most, actually, in youth cricket is how do I find an extra yard of pace? How do you get quicker yeah. as a bowler? Well, this is a couple of things, right, that I, I talk about at length with coaches of kids, boys and girls. You cannot coach pace, right? You, you can iron out technical things, but the one thing I hate... And, and I see it and I hear it time and time again. Slow down, bowl a bit straighter, and we'll sort, you know. <coughs> no, don't yeah. slow down. You bowl as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. My job, your job as a coach, is to iron those little things out. I can teach you how to bowl straight. I can't teach you how to bowl fast if you want to bowl fast. So don't slow down. Don't tell your kids to slow down. Just teach them how to bowl it straighter. That's your job. I can I ask you something we don't talk about much? Um, is the delivery stride. I thought Ian Ward... Ian, not Ian Ward. Thank you, Ian Vanessa. did a really good um, split screen yesterday of Robinson and Jameson. What is the ideal sort of delivery strike? And is that completely natural? How difficult would it be to change? Uh, you can shorten your delivery stride. You can shorten a bowler's delivery stride. It's not really easy to do. Now, just take a look here. So what, we'll talk about Ollie Robinson left of screen. Have a look at that back foot, for, for, first and foremost, pointing 
almost at mid on. All right? He's got a short delivery strike. I like it, but when we roll it forward, you look at Kyle Jamison is moving towards about square leg. When we roll this forward, short delivery stride, great, but he is unable to get a braced front knee. Because that back leg is pointing so far backwards, he is unable to brace that front leg because he has to get it around his body, therefore he can't brace it. Kyle Jamison with the, the toe pointing towards uh, a square leg position, square leg umpire, he's able to get his body around and therefore be able to bowl over top of a braced front leg. Now both those guys delivering the ball from a fairly similar height, yet Jamison is a little bit taller. The delivery stride to me allows you to be taller. I'd, I could get, you know, if Ollie Robinson could straighten that back foot up more towards square leg or maybe fine leg, I could get another three, four inches out of that delivery stride, which would make him even more dangerous over top of a braced front leg. He is, what I see time and time again with that really bent front leg, your injury's waiting to happen. Your back, groin, those sorts of injuries are waiting to happen. Talked about Jasprit Bumrah, who I think is a fine... Uh, sorry, Hardik Pandya, who's a fine bowler, fine all-rounder, but he has just been an injury waiting to happen from an Indian point of view. He's had a lot of time out, he's come back, and he hasn't fixed it. He's doing exactly the same things wrong. So the delivery stride to me... Go back in time again. Wakar Yunus, Brett Lee, Shoabakta, genuine quick bowlers, long delivery stride, but they were draggers. They were draggers. Bowl over a braced front leg, but they dragged. So they didn't need to have a short delivery stride and bowl over the top. They weren't looking for height, looking for genuine pace. I think if you're a tall bowler, medium pace, shorter delivery stride, over top of that braced front leg, use every bit of height you've got, that's more beneficial. Just a final point on this, and it's a bowling point, but I'm going to come to you is that from a batting perspective. Left-handers, bowling at left-handers. Jeff Arnold always used to say to me, left-handers, right arm over, try and swing it back in, hit him on the pad. If it doesn't swing, goes across, there's your outside edge, or you're challenging the outside edge. Anderson and Broad have ripped that rule back up, haven't they? Absolutely. I mean, two of the great, well, the two greatest England bowlers, swing bowlers, do it completely different. Surrey and Botham. I watch footage of the left-handers in Ashes series just falling over massive in-swingers from Beefy. Just falling over LBW and bold. He's done them for fun. And he used to sit up here and go, when Jimmy used to go round the wicket early, not later as plan Straight B, away. first ball, yeah. round the wicket. He used to, you know how Beefy was, it wasn't like, <laughs> it's like, that's just nonsense, get over the wicket, you're swinging it. And Jimmy would go round the wicket and bowl those and set them up with that one. And he, it's just the way, maybe because left-handers... You know, used to the ball coming back in, your technique. Maybe the stuff that Ath did yesterday with the England analyst about how the game has changed, yeah. pitching outside leg, maybe the different angle, bring the slip cordon into play. But one thing's for certain, you cannot argue that what Anderson is doing is working and what Broad's doing is working. Broad to Warner, seven times in the Ashes. They know what they're doing to left-handers. Interesting, lads. Thanks very much indeed. Sadly, it is raining here, so we have a delayed start for day three of this first test. We've had blue skies, sunshine, it's been hot, and we have had the return of crowds.